You can do a lot with web scraping, from data mining, to analysis, to automation, and even creating bots. In this tutorial, we'll be scraping the 250 top rated movies from IMDb. We'll be doing so using Node and a library called Cheerio. So let's get right into the code. Let's first open up our favorite text editor. In this case, it's, uh, it's uh, VS Code and let's create a index.js file since we are using Node. Uh, we are going to install the two packages that we are going to need, which are Axios and Cherio. Let's wait for that to finish. Then let's require both of those and Cherio as well. Nice. Uh, and we are also going to be using the file system. So let's require that uh, since we are going to need to create the .json file in the end. Now let's continue by initializing the uh, URL variable that we are going to scrape. So in this case, it's the IMDb top 250 movies and let's paste it in right here. Now let's also initialize an empty object, which we'll later parse into JSON and um, well, write it into a file. So let's call it movies data, let's say. And it's just going to be an empty object. So now we're going to declare an async function that is going to extract the HTML from the page that we are well going to scrape. And it's going to be an async function because we first need to await for the data to then well parse it with, uh, with Cheerio. So, uh, in this case, let's uh, declare the function. Let's call it get HTML. It's not going to accept any params. And GitHub Copilot apparently does the job for us. It destructures the data that it gets from axios.get on our URL, and then it returns it. So that's perfect. So now since we have a function which gets the HTML of a page, let's actually call it and chain a dot then on top of it, which uh, has a callback function or accepts a callback function which also has a parameter called res, which we're going to use right now uh, by initializing a variable called dollar sign, which is just going to call Cheerios uh, dot load method on this response uh, parameter. And the response parameter is just basically the HTML that we've gotten from the get HTML function. So just before we get into selecting the elements that we need inside of our code, we first need to know their CSS selectors. So in this case, we are interested in the movie title and the rating. So we can just right click and inspect element. And in this case, we can see that it all of the movies are located inside of a table, which has a T body um, tag with a class of lister dot hyphen. And each movie is represented by a table row uh, element. And each one of them has a TD with uh, a class of title column and a TD with a class of rating column for the rating as well. Now that we have the CSS selectors, we can actually make use of the dollar sign variable that we just declared. And we can select uh, the table body by its class lister hyphen list uh, and each of the rows that it has. Uh, now we can call the dot each method, which is really similar to JavaScript's dot for each. Uh, and it accepts a callback function, which has two parameters, the index and a corresponding movie. Uh, in the function body, uh, we will declare two variables, title and rating. The way we got them is by calling the dot find method uh, and just uh, going through each element or well, in this case, each row of uh, the table body and inside of it, going through the elements and finding them by the CSS selectors. Uh, for the title, we used the class selector of title column and then selected the anchor tag in which the text exists. And then we just chained a dot text method, which basically just gets the HTML text content of it. And for the rating, we did a similar thing. We also called the dot find method, but in this case, we called it by the class rating, uh, rating column and uh, the text lived inside of a strong tag. Now we just need to fill up our empty object, which we just earlier declared as movies data. And for the key, we will uh, select the title. And for the value, we will obviously select rating. And now lastly, we'll want to write the JSON file. And for that, we'll be using the file system module and the method write file. First, we'll want to name the file. So in this case, we can call it moviesdata.json. Uh, the second thing that this is going to accept is the actual data. So let's call the json.stringdefine method on our movies data that we just built. 
And lastly, it will accept a callback, uh, which has a parameter of error. And in this function, we can just, if there is an error, throw the error. And if there's no error, it's just going to console log uh, file successfully saved, I guess. And at this point, we're done. Let's just execute the script, node index, and file successfully saved. And we have a new file in our directory called moviesdata.json, and here we go. There's all of our movies with their corresponding ratings. Now, if this video helped you out, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos on web development and scraping.